Secretary General Fiki, my colleague, Special Secretary Logistics, Mr. Binay Kumar, ladies and gentlemen. I'm quite delighted that uh, while this is not one of those giant rooms, it's got all the right people in it and all the stakeholders. It's not just uh, the brand new baby of the logistics in the Department of Commerce, the World Bank Group, FICI, as well as all the industry stakeholder organizations who are here today and who have come together uh, to actually debate on the challenges we face and what should be some of our focus uh, areas as we move ahead. I think when we, we are, uh, the place at which we stand um, and the way we look at our country and its aspirations, those aspirations for economic growth, employment generation, manufacturing, exports, they're all of them inextricably linked with the issue of logistics and its efficiency. It's, it's, it's an essential element, it's something we cannot ignore, and uh, as has already been mentioned, uh, it has the capacity to make that quantum improvement in where we are. There are countries, there are nations which have survived only on logistics. India may not be such a one, and that is not really the context in which we are. We are not Singapore, we are not Dubai, we may not be. And perhaps those models, while they are excellent, they are exemplary lessons in many aspects of what we hope to do. They are not the whole story for India. There have been a lot of studies, a lot of numbers that are bandied about for want of a better indicator, we have been stating that the cost of the logistics for India is around 14% of our GDP and it's far higher than for other countries. So if we set ourselves and a goal, then certainly it is to be much closer to the world average and to set ourselves a benchmark of achieving at least about 10%. So a 4% increase has enormous capacity to move the economy. One of the key elements has certainly been infrastructure. Amongst all the elements in which we have been, we have found ourselves uh, lagging, infrastructure has been one of the key. And in recent years there's been a great sp push on the public spending in infrastructure. During the te 12th plan, we estimated that we spent close to 56 lakh crores, about $1 trillion on infrastructure. So highways, and we are seeing the news regularly on the speed and the acceleration in the highway sector. Railway tracks are, are being laid at a faster pace. Ports are getting modernized and IT enabled and new airports and connectivity are being added at a tremendous speed which we have not seen in the decades before this. <coughs> Apart from this, and this has also been a focus over the last uh, th three or four years, has been the focus on strengthening our regulatory processes, improving the kind of uh, regulatory environment in which we work and <clears throat> very seriously moving the agenda for digitization and, and paperless interface with the government forward. And tremendous achievements have been made in all these areas. I think it was a reflection of some of these efforts, perhaps not all, that has ref reflected in our improvements in the logistics performance index of the World Bank in 2016, where India improved from 54 in 2014 to 35, 
So it was a substantive jump and it was reflected across all the six dimensions which uh, the World Bank country director referred to. What we have tried and worked on for more than a decade and which became a reality last year was the GST. Yes, it is currently a work in progress. There is much improvement to be done. The IT backbone still requires to be uh, sorted. But nevertheless, the impact of it is already visible on the ground. The speed of movement of cargo has accelerated. The kind of efficiencies we are seeing by breaking down, by creating a unified single market, this is already adding value. Our warehousing industry, which has been so fragmented, is beginning to get consolidated. But despite uh, these gains, and we are very conscious of this, there are a large number of challenges before us. The minister referred to the large number of ministries that are involved, the large number of agencies that are involved, and the very large number of the private sector stakeholders who are an intrinsic part of this story. Stitching them together is, is a, a tough one. And it's a challenge that I think uh, while we were, <coughs> there were many views on where logistics, integrated logistics management should be housed, I think probably the Department of Commerce, which is responsible for the deliverable in terms of efficiency uh, is probably the, the one place where these elements can all begin to meet. The logistics, and we, we talked about the India growth rate, but the, the, the logistics story has been interesting. There what we have seen is a compound annual growth rate, which is at 10.5%, outpacing the growth of the domestic economy. I think this, the potential of the logistics sector to improve efficiency is one, but also to create economic opportunities, to create employment. This, this is also something that we need, to, we need to be very conscious and aware of, that this is also part of the story that we can uh, tap and harness. E-commerce happening quite separately is another one which is adding the opportunities for the logistics sector. Different kinds of opportunities, newer opportunities, and again, tremendous opportunities for employment, which is a fundamental uh, objective for India. Very recently, uh, much of the work that we have been doing in the Department of Commerce on the services sector and focusing on creating a regulatory uh, framework as well as a, a focus for the services sector, again with the same objective of economic growth and employment, has been consolidated, if I may, in terms of policy and focus by the government of India key champion services sectors have been identified. And one of those is the logistics uh, and transportation sector. So I think this is important because what it does is push for regulation, legal frameworks, standards, and focus to these services sectors. I think this is important because we can have in many number of discussions, but unless we have this focus and we put it in for terms of time-bound action plans, we probably will make slow and incremental progress and will not be monitoring it in the fashion in which it needs to be done. So a untied, uh, non-lapsable fund has been created for the services sector of 5,000 crores for the key projects which will drive these services sectors for those which do not really fit into neat boxes. And I think this is a great reassurance to these sectors that 
these resources are available for those uh, efforts, those initiatives, uh, which will either become exemplars or become the models on which we can grow uh, our efforts. At the, uh, our logistics division actually was born formally only in November of last year, so it's very young. Um, but in this time, one of some of the early initiatives which have happened, uh, the government of India has provided infrastructure status to some of the logistics activities, specifically warehousing, coal chains, multimodal parks, and this this is facilitating access to long-term credit. We've also uh, taken a decision to enhance direct port delivery to 80% and to focus very strongly on risk management uh, systems so that goods are getting cleared faster at various ports and export points. This is becoming a, a, a strong monitoring agenda. We are also looking at the issues of intermodality. All the key ministries are part of an interministerial group that is functioning already with the Department of Commerce. And because of their regular meetings, because of their regular interfaces, slowly these conversations, these interconnections are beginning to happen. We are working right now, and these are the early initiatives that we are working on, is on a short-term and medium-term integrated plan on logistics under the overall umbrella of a policy framework. This is expected to provide us with the blueprint, and this is the effort into which we hope that this workshop will give initiatives uh, and inputs. We are also working on an integrated digital platform that would be a single window where all stakeholders are able to access. And we hope to have this proof of concept ready in a few months' time so that the stakeholders can be visible as well as provide inputs into this. The minister spoke about the engagement with the states. I think uh, it's very important. Logistics is really not particularly disaggregated to states. It spans more than one. So it is not so amenable to a subnational, uh, if I may say, ranking. But what we try to do through the uh, logistics efficiency across different states, which we launched with the state trade ministers last December, was really to indicate where are the bottlenecks, what are the uh, areas for strengthening, and try to give this a state focus. I must say that all the trade ministers took this initiative very seriously. There was a tremendous amount of interest. And states have taken different routes to actually try and address the issues which got flagged state by state in that study. Some of them have integrated logistics chapters into their export policies. Some states, like Chhattisgarh, which will release its logistics park policy today, have uh, actually delineated a specific policy to a specific objective. But the conversations at the subnational level on logistics, on the importance of logistics, and how it adds value uh, to economic growth. I think that has been the biggest outcome of uh, this effort. These are just the early beginnings of what we hope to do. Uh, we know that uh, while as we grapple with the issues, it is the stakeholders who will tell us what the pain points are, how they need to be addressed, and possibly where some of the solutions lie. I am sure that uh, other countries have grappled with similar dilemmas and have found answers. But I also know that there is no single answer, and particularly for a country with 
the kind of complexity that we have, the kind of multimodal mix that we have, um, and some of the distortions that have come up over the years, we will have to chart our own path. But we look forward to your inputs, and I do hope that this is a productive uh, workshop, but this will not be the only engagement. We will have to do this continuously and to build the frameworks for a continuous engagement. Thank you very much.